I don't even want like the smallest things going wrong because I'm like, even when it's just small, I'm like, this could have went wrong and this could have cost us money. I, again, so for me, it was like, these mistakes can cost me. So rather than me making a mistake and it cost me, let me just, and I'll use this term and people need to like, let me invest in my business by hiring an operations manager instead of looking at it like it's a monthly expense. It's a monthly investment into my business. <laughs> Because the management and transparency is what's very important. So once you submit a referral, you're going to have your own home advantage account and it's going to tell you where everything sits. So if you have 10 referrals that you've sent into the network, it's going to give you all 10 referrals. It's going to tell you every milestone that that client is sitting in, whether they're touring homes, whether they're an escrow. And you now can manage through the home advantage application as far as what your pipeline looks like for the referrals that you've sent. And so it's pretty sophisticated uh, and it's, it's all click of a button, guys. Here we go. Let's get it kicked off. Um, I have a very special guest with me today. And his name is Montaz McCray, and he uh, he is a bit of a celebrity. See what I did there? A celebrity, Keller Williams celebrity. I love that. Uh, yeah, Montaz was recently on stage at Mega Camp with Gary Keller, um, telling his story, and we wanted to have him here on Lab Coats to tell his story uh, even more. He's been in the business for two years now, right? Yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, and he is in the Baltimore area, and he did thirty-five transactions in his first year in the business, and that equated to what nine twenty nineteen twenty million your first year. Well, eleven point five million. Eleven. Oh, you're gonna do twenty million about twenty million this year, right? Well, yeah, I did 21.5 million last year, but I'll probably do somewhere between like 23 to 26 this year. So really. you're in your third year now. In my third year, yeah. Wow, dude. That's amazing. And you know what I love about this? You're only 24 years old. Dude, when I was 24, I was just like goofing off. I was on the 10 year plan at the university and bartending, living the dream. And Montaz, is making the money you know when you give a 24 year old that kind of money when you give me when you give the nick when you give a 24 year old nick baldwin that kind of money it goes down the toilet but when you give montaz that kind of money he invests in 12 income properties we're gonna get into that in a minute montaz thanks for being here dude i'll shut up now how are you i'm great thanks so much for having me this is yeah this man is great. tell us about you know i want to just know how you got into the business okay so how i got into the uh got into the business i was in my last semester of undergraduate school and it was actually like my last month and i took a trip to atlanta to visit a friend and i really respected this friend they held a, a very prestigious position at apple they were the head of business development and had a million dollar house had the two hundred thousand dollar g-wagon and i'm like wow I want those things. <laughs> but then he told me that he was quitting Apple and getting into real estate full time. So I'm just like, well, why are you like, why are you doing this? I was I was about to graduate at the top of my class. So I was going to go to NYU to uh, oh, very NYU nice. PBA school to like get that degree because I graduated from a small like college. I did well. I got a 3.75 GPA, but I needed further credentials to uh perpetuate myself faster to make more money because I wanted to uh, I was going to go into consulting and finance long story short I seen how he was living he told me he was quitting and getting real estate I'm like well you know what if he's leaving this prestigious position there must be something there so that led me to get my real estate license before I um, went to NYU to get uh, get my MBA and spend all that money and so then you got a job right out of college right Making so, six figures. Got my dream job right out of college, uh, working for in a nonprofit as a staff accountant. But yes, I was able to, I had like multiple job offers. So I was really able to negotiate a really competitive salary. Okay. Coming right out of 
the school. Yeah, I mean, because I had a 3.75 GPA and then I had all the high honors and things. And so it just made it easier for me to sell myself and try to, uh, you know, get get the rate, uh, get the salary rate that I wanted. And what did you do? What's the first purchase you made when you when you uh, when you got when you got that six figure job? So, you know, <laughs> I had a friend who he graduated at the same time. So he bought a Range Rover, but he was in a much better financial position than his mm-hmm. parents probably helping him a lot more than my parents were but we decided we wanted to be twins so I went and leased a Range Rover as well totally could be twins and yeah there's nothing like Range Rover twinsies literally literally so the payment is literally it was like 899 like almost a thousand dollars that was one of my first purchases uh it was a lease oh my god okay and you got fired from your job after a very short period of time right literally like not even three months in and <laughs> not even because they found out that you were going that you were taking a real estate class so well no i had when i started that job i had already had my license so i literally got home from that trip to atlanta and i'm like okay cool i started working on my license immediately so by the time that month had ended I literally had my license. So I started, I hung my real estate license and I started my first big boy job, that staff account job on the same day. Mm -hmm. So from day one, you know, I was trying to go to all the team meetings, watch all the trainings, leaving early to go do showings for people. And I had like little rental, I had like rental clients that I were working with and I was leaving early to go do open houses and things of that nature. So it it was a lot. And I mean, I got fired. They did find my social media, but it was a, it was a performance as well. I won't lie and act like. I, <laughs> well, you weren't feeling it. Yeah, I, I wasn't feeling because I was trying to do real estate at the same time. Yeah. So, I would say it was it was a mix of both, and my performance wasn't there because I mean, real estate is very time intensive. You can't be half in and half out. If you're going to do real estate and you want high success, you have to be a hundred percent in it, dedicated every day, and just like yeah. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. Nothing wrong with being dual career, but I think that, you know, if you really want to, you know, take it to the next level, you got to give it your all. So um, I'm I'm curious, like your first year in the business, from what I remember, the first six months, you didn't do a single deal, right? right. And then the next six months, it just kind of took off. What were you doing for the first six months to then create a successful back half of that first year yeah so uh like on the stage too i referenced and alluded to knowing what to say and how to say it i feel like you know you get a lot of opportunities as a new agent and people like you might be out to dinner with maybe some family members and they kind of just ask you some questions they ask you how the market is and you just start blabbing all about the market but the really the real question the real answer to the question is the market's great are you looking to buy or sell you know, but you would think as a new agent, let me just try to sound so smart. Oh, the market is great. What are you, are you looking to buy or sell? You know, because it's it, it's different cues and things that you should say, because now if you if you have somebody uh, say that they're looking to sell, you can uh, you can craft the answer. But uh, also in that answer, intertwine pieces of your value proposition and how you're helping your clients sell for top dollar, like in different things that you have that's unique to other agents, you know, so. Instead of just blabbing, just knowing what to say, also learning the product, uh, hosting several open houses. I got to walk through different style homes, got to learn materials and homes and things of that nature. And that really helped me to become a better real estate advisor. So, I mean, it, it takes time. And then again, I'm handling one of the largest transactions that somebody will ever make in their life. So to go from, hey, just making this big announcement that I just got my real estate license and expecting people to want to call me and blow my phone up. I mean, you, you got to think like it's literally one of the biggest transactions that somebody's ever going to make in their life. Do you really think that they want to chance it with somebody who just got started, who barely knows they're doing? You have to show people that, you know, you're worthy uh, enough to earn their business uh, at, at first. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And so like a lot of uh, new agents, you know, they get into the biz or like now I'm going to make all the money. They don't take the time to learn the business. They don't take the time to learn the inventory, to learn how a deal is done. I mean, 
half of them don't even take the time to read a contract until they're actually filling one out for the first time. Right. So that's super important. Okay. So, you know, it's interesting. So uh, Gary Keller said to me uh, a couple weeks ago, because we were talking about, um, talking about, you know, real estate and business. And he said, are you, he said, do you lead generate or are you your lead generation? And that makes sense, right? Like that's what, do you sit down and lead gen or do you just kind of like, is your, is, are you living your day to, are you living your life as your, as your lead generation? And that's kind of like what you were doing. You were going out, learning the market, learning how houses were built, learning how deals are done. And then when you start having conversations with people, you know what you're talking about, even though you haven't sold the house, right? Yeah, uh, eventually. And then again, you know, in real estate, you get paid in arrears. So you get paid for stuff that I do today. I'll get paid three months later. It, yeah. It's not just the gratification in real estate. It's just con being consistent and steadily, um, steadily staying in the business and, you know, steadily trying to add more and more value to your clientele. So tell me about your first deal. Okay, my first deal. Um, so it's funny. I used to wait tables through college. And I met this uh, this man. He had on a I'm a future millionaire T-shirt. And so I walked up to him. I'm like, anybody who has a I'm a future millionaire T-shirt. He said, on, hey, I'm a future millionaire too. Right. I mean, little did I know. <laughs> I, and I just said, you know, anybody who has a, I'm a future millionaire T-shirt on, they must run a business. What kind of business do you run? And he said, hey, I run a real estate business, da, 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 and, you know, flipping and investing in properties. Cool. So we just kept kept in contact and and uh, we followed each other on Instagram. Fast forward two or three years later, I make the announcement on Instagram, you know, that I'm a licensed Maryland realtor and X, Y, Z. And he hadn't really trusted the realtors up until that point and, uh, and that whole shebang. But anyway, I saw that he bought his wife a Benz for Christmas. I commented on there. That's a boss move. Then he said, oh, perfect. Yep. Come sell two houses for me. Oh, and that was my. That was my first piece of uh, like, you know, my first lead. So first piece of business. So was long he, story. He flipped the houses and he wanted you to list them. Yeah. He flipped them and he wanted me to, he wanted me to list them. So what had happened was I listed one of the properties, but it had some permanent issues. I didn't end up selling it till months, months later, but he ended up buying a section eight house for $60,000. Mm -hmm. And that was my first closing. So it was my first closing, but it wasn't as glorified and perfect because it was literally only $60,000. And I think I made, what, like maybe a grand after fees. Mm -hmm. I've already carried all of these expenses for six months, licensing fees, century lock, you know, MLS fees. Yeah, it paid for all that. Marketing. So I'm I'm in the hole big time. <laughs> so it was nice, but it was like, oh, like, oh wow, like $1,000, like, perfect. So then from there, how'd your second deal come about? Because I'm feeling like, you know, you spent all this time building your business up the first six months. And then the last half of that year, you did 36 transactions, uh, 35 transactions. So it kind of snowballed. So how did it start to snowball? How did it start to snowball? It's just like the different seeds and pieces that I had planted in that first six months. They all just give me an example of a seed other than that guy. Um, well, I would say social media marketing, just putting okay. myself and then people see him see me be consistent one of yeah. my uh sister's friends called me to sell her house sold sold her house and this was when the market was smoking hot if you put a listing up it would just right. like it would just go um and then but social media was really it's been really big and instrumental for me i like to keep it organic i do all my own posts and i don't have anybody i didn't i don't pay a company to post mm -hmm. for me but I just try to like post things that'll resonate with people and that are relatable and uh, just be my true and genuine self, but also just show myself in a, in the best light, you know? So when people know that they're, if they're looking to buy or sell in central Maryland, DC or Northern Virginia, that they, they should know like that Montez McCray is somebody that I should contact because he's constantly doing their business day in and day out. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. So when it started to snowball, 35 transactions in six months is like three, four, three or four deals a month, give or take. Right. Yeah. So you had, you were averaging about a closing a week. Did yep. you feel overwhelmed? You know, did, when you, I know you have an admin now, right? 
Yeah, I have an operations manager. I have a, a virtual assistant, a transaction coordinator, and I have about uh, two to three showing partners that I pay. Per oh, hour. wow. Look at you. Okay. I didn't realize it was that built out. So when did you realize, because this is a problem with a lot of agents, you know, they can get burnt out really. They, they'll see success quickly and then it'll crash and burn because they won't they won't put the leverage in place. So when did you feel like okay, this is the time now where I need to make my first hire and how did it look? Yeah, so quality, quality, quality. I was starting to get burnt out. Things were starting to slip through the cracks. And yeah. I'm a bit like I'm a type A kind of guy. I want like everything to be like if everything could be perfect, I want it to be perfect. But I'm like type A. I don't even want like the smallest things going wrong because I'm like, even when it's just small, I'm like, this could have went wrong and this could have cost us money. I, again, so for me, it was like, these mistakes can cost me. So rather than me making a mistake and it cost me, let me just, and I'll use this term and people need to like, let me invest in my business by hiring an operations manager instead of looking at it like, it's a monthly expense. It's a monthly investment into my business if you do it the right way by hiring the right people in your business. But I started with a virtual cyber backer. And so okay. last year, when I did 20, uh, like 21.5 million in sales volume, it was myself, a cyber backer, and a transaction coordinator. And I had some showing partners to help me out in addition to me showing all the time. But like mm -hmm. I did that with a virtual assistant. But now my life has gotten a lot better by having an operations manager, um, you know, full time in person working for me like 50 to 60 hours a week, plus plus the cyber backer, plus a transaction coordinator. I love that. Hey, there's a good question in the chat. There's a lot of younger agents on this call. And so, uh, oh, 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 Naisha. Oh, I met her at um at at a at a gathering in um in Austin. What's up? I remember you. She wants to know how you can elaborate, if you can elaborate on how you overcame the age barrier, you know, because you're 24. So you got into the business when you were like 21, right? Yeah, like 21. So for me, the uh, age barrier, that was a big limiting belief that I had, you know, because I didn't see a lot of young people doing it. And then, you know, African-American doing it at a high level. So what I did, I just said, hey, like, I just have to be like, five times better, right? I need to know my scripts. I need to just bring more bring more value to my clientele. So really just honing in, meeting with, doing interviews with all the best agents in my office. Then I would call agents from other offices. Like I just did an interview with Bill DeVore. I just talked to Catherine Rain, um, you know, talking to people like Kimba Mankiti, just getting as much insight as possible so I could learn little nuggets. And what I did was, which most people don't do, the nuggets that I got, I actually applied into my business. Instead of just having a conversation and not doing anything with the information that I got, I actually applied those nuggets and gems into, into my business, which would really be instrumental. And I listen, I literally have a notability. I have like all the interviews that I've done with, uh, you know, with top agents. I literally have notes all of my notability and I can just go back and reread and just see how yeah. I apply to my business. You know, so I'm, there's a lot of questions in the chat and I'm going to get to them in a minute. But I'm super curious about what, you you know, because you're a very type A person. So your day is probably very structured. What is mm -hmm. a typical day in your life look like? Yeah. So I'm usually up like 530. I'll go to the gym like between six to eight. I'll be back at my desk like 830 at the latest nine. And then um from nine to 10, I'm team meetings with my team, VA operations manager, like setting them up. And then like from 10 to 1230, I'm lead genning as far as, hey, am I posting on social media or am I calling, doing like lead follow up and things to that nature? Um, like in my database, who can I call in my database to follow up with? And then after that, 
uh, like I'll, I'll start taking appointments, right? But I really try to uh, have my morning set up so I can worry about my 30 to 60 to 90 days later. Because I've always carried about 10 to 15 deals under contract, but, and that's fine. That's all fine and dandy, but like, how am I going to eat the the next 30 to 60, 90 days? So you have to be 10, like, even though you have deals under contract, you have to tee up your next 30 to 60, 90. For sure. I mean, the day that you stop lead generating is the day that you take food out of your mouth three months from now. You know what I mean? You got to have that mindset. Okay. So um, let me go to some of these questions over here. I want to pick up. There's a lot of really great ones, um, but let's talk about your lead generation. Cause I have this question too. Do you carve time out of your day to lead gen and if so, what does it look like? Or are you calling your database? You know, what type of regular lead generation are you doing to get in front of people? Yeah. So um, like you said, like Gary said, like lead generation should really be like, I don't, you just lead gen around everything that you like to do. I made lead gen like a lifestyle. Like okay. I make I make it a point to like dress nice, to always be well kept. So when I go to events, I'm meeting people. We're we're exchanging information. When I even when I had my Range Rover, I literally I would use that to lead generate. I would pull up wherever I usually go to nice places. And like one day, I literally sold a man a house like this. Pulled up, saw him. He pulled up in a BMW. I timed it so I got out when he got out, and I was just <laughs> like, and I was like, man, that's. A a nice car like what model is that blah 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 i hyped them all up da, da, da. and then you know what do you do and we just built rapport xyz he asked me and of course he see that i drive i drive a range Rover, and i look i'm fairly young he wants to know what i do oh i'm a real estate developer but i also have a niche clientele that i help service you know with purchasing and selling houses um and uh, at the end of the conversation hey man listen just want to give you my card it's hard to come by a good contract is but take my card i have a rolodex of great contractors in this area and we exchanged information, followed up with him a few weeks later, sent him my lender's contact information. He ended up buying a $600,000 house with me. Literally just as simple as that lead generating around my lifestyle. I like to go to nice restaurants, dress nice, have my laptop, an iPad. People are asking me what I do, making contacts. When I go to events, dress nice. People, my, especially my good friends that like to travel with me all the time, they already know the script. Hey, hey, um, hey, Bill, just wanted to introduce you to my good friend Montez. He's like one of the number one agents in the state of Maryland. You guys should connect. Boom. We're making a relationship. My friends, my friend, my really good friends, they already know. I'm like, I can't travel if I don't make money. So they already know what the script is because they want to travel. Dude, I love have- it. So basically, you know, you're, you know, you are your own billboard and from what I'm what I'm getting at, what I'm getting from this is that you, like you said, live your lead generation and you have conversations and you go places where people have money to buy homes or people who own homes and want to sell them. Like you're putting yourself in the right places at not necessarily the right places at the right time, but the right places having conversations and just learning about people. And when they find out you're a realtor, they want to have that conversation about real estate, right? I mean, not all the time, but that's what I'm gathering. And just be a decent human being. One of my clients, well, one of my best friends, I've literally sold five to six houses from one of my best friends. Okay. Okay. Script, but I sold one of his friends, one of his best other best friends, a house. And you know, I did a check back call with him and just seeing how everything was. And he just told me, he said, Hey Montez, everything is good. You know, I just potentially I want a new job, you know, because um I just feel like my job doesn't value me. I go on Instagram because I have a, like about 10,000 followers and blah blah blah. I post, hey, I have a friend who is a really hardworking financial analyst looking for a job that's gonna pay him what he's worth. And he's willing to do any job and, you know, in the finance industry. And he has a uh, economics degree. Three people hit me up saying, hey, I, we have these positions open and I forwarded him the information. Now he's doing interviews. And that's just something small that mm-hmm. I did. But he will forever remember that. 
you know, and that, it didn't cost me anything. But when you think about coming from contribution and really adding value to other people's lives, it's simple things that you can do like that, that'll make a, a lasting impact on somebody. I love it, dude. Hey, there's a great question. Like, you know, uh, do you own your own home now? Yeah, so I own 12 houses. You own 12 I, houses. You live in one of them? Yeah, I live in one of 12. Okay, so, you know, it was several years into the business for me when I bought my actual own home, right? So like, you know, I was working with buyers, but I didn't know what they were. I didn't really know what they were going through. So someone in the chat is wanting to know that what, what do you learn? Well, there's, I have an added question to this. They want to know what you learned about closing buyers on the fence, considering that you're young and you are new to the business. And what, what were you doing before? Like, you didn't know what they were going through because you were younger. You had never gone through a transaction on your own. So how'd you handle that? Yeah. So I think there's just a whole care aspect to it too. Right. So it's just like, be empathetic, you know, care, really ask questions. You know, yes, you don't own a home yet, but at the end of the day, just want what's best for the client. Um, just holistically, like I sold 35 houses my first year, but so after like that first year, monetarily, I wasn't really like pressed. Of course I need to make money, but I wasn't mm -hmm. like, I don't need to throw somebody into a house to try to pay my bills or anything. My business doubled to do 78 units last year and for 21.5 million, just because I could really advise with a clear heart and a clear mind. If mm -hmm. somebody walked a house and I felt like it wasn't a good fit, I would say, hey, I don't think that this is the house for you for reasons A, B, and C. However, if you still want to purchase it, but this is my honest opinion. And yeah. you can't put a dollar amount on that. And that's when people really started to view me as a, as a real advisor and my business doubled uh, because of that, because they trusted me and they referred me to family, they referred me to friends and things of that nature. And it was just a next level trust. So I would just say, um, just care, be empathetic and really want what's best for that person. I know it's hard sometimes, you know, when, when your yep. bills are, are due next time, but like really build up a, a nest egg in this business. So you can uh, really be the true advisor that your clients need. Yeah. I think that's awesome. You know, like I always took that, that, um, I always took that angle as well. Like not angles, a bad word for it, but like, here's the thing. Like if, if, if someone ends up getting into a house that they end up not liking or they're not 100% sure every time they think of you that that's going to be that's going to be part of it right so like if you honestly feel that that a house isn't right for somebody you need to say it and i know it can be tough cuz times can be tough but commission breath reeks right like it's going to happen so much faster for you if you just are honest with your clients and you have empathy and compassion and you put them first, they're going to find something so much faster as opposed to like, oh, I don't know. Right. So I think that it's a really good, um, a good, great piece of advice. So I just want to talk real quick about your 12 investment properties. Like how did that happen? You know, that's, that's a lot of properties in a short period of time. Yeah. So it, it all happened so fast. Uh, one of my mentors, Adam, Adam Foote, he's actually at my office in Keller Williams Realty Center. He helped me a lot. He helped me out a lot when I first got started in, in this business. And I was going through so many different, you know, mental battles, battling imposter syndrome and things of that nature. So shout out to Adam Foote at Keller Williams Realty Center. Um, but well, how did it happen? He always told me, he was like, Montez, make sure you buy properties. Make sure you buy properties, buy properties. So uh, I bought my first property. I lived in it for a year. And then I moved to, to a bigger house. I put a renter in that one. I was making like 700 bucks a month just on, on that prop, on that okay, one property. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and then me and my sister bought a property together. And then, uh, well, my sister lived with me. We bought that property. We rented it out. So we just got really savvy really fast. And then the... Uh, the gentleman that I met waiting tables, he was buying a lot of investment properties mm -hmm. through me. And then I seen how much money he was making and things of that nature and like uh, how, how fast these properties were appreciating. I was like, hey, well, we should invest together. And we just knew if if you want to um, if you want to go far, 
if you want to go far, go uh, go alone. But if you want to go fast, I guess go together. Something like that, right? But I was like, well, listen, let's partner up. And then so we've been able to kind of like ramp up our operation. And our most recent purchase was like a four unit building for um bought it for like four hundred thousand, but now it's valued at six fifty after we made some repairs to it. Good so, for you. That's yeah, that's the big thing. And building generational wealth too. Like I don't want to be like 70 selling homes. Even nothing's wrong with being 70 and selling homes, but and starting at 20, I don't want to be 70 selling Yeah, homes. dude. I, I love that. And um yeah, uh appreciate uh Chase and Jeff posting in the Zoom chat your book. You're a published author to add to this, oh, yeah. which I completely forgot to mention. The link is now in the chat on Zoom. And you can go uh, to Amazon, I would assume, right? Is it on Amazon or somewhere? Okay. Yeah, Amazon, The Young Professional's Guide to Making an Impact as a First-Year Real Estate Agent. Definitely go check that out. Um, I could talk to you all day, but I just want to end on one quick question because everybody wants to know this. Um, Your social media blows up. You got 10,000 followers on Instagram. I mean, it, it, everyone's asking, how do we find her, his social? How many Montaz, how many people named Montaz do you know? Go type in Montaz McRae. You'll find him. He's probably the only one. So go <laughs> type that up. How did you get to 10,000 followers? Like what did your, because you're very purposeful about social media. What's a couple pieces of actionable advice that agents can do to uh, get engagement and grow their following? Yeah, like be authentic, be yourself. Uh, think about coming from contribution and adding value. And I think just being a resource, right? Like, I feel like I stand for a few different things. I think some people follow me as far as just representation, like young African-American um, real, real estate agent, investor, developer, um, but just serious, just ser- like every day, like I'm doing something to uh, further perpetuate my career. And, you know, that's that's just the goal, be unique, be different. I have different realtors that I follow for different reasons. Just like some, some of them like just have superb marketing and like just how they present themselves is just extremely eloquent. And I like to follow them and I follow them for inspo. And, um, you know, so just be unique, have a, have a purpose and, you know, be consistent with your brand, but just really be authentic and relatable. That's the biggest thing. People love people that they can relate to. Yeah. I think people overthink a lot of what they post. And I think, are you, well, are you uh, off the cuff with your posting or do you kind of like plan it out? I feel like you're a plan it out kind of guy, right? Uh, I'm really off the cuff. Oh, like, you um, are? Okay. Cause you're a, you're an A personality. So I thought maybe like, you know, you kind of planned it to an extent, but do you just, you come up with stuff like, off yeah, the like, cuff, I'll right? have, like different themes and I'll like write them down. Like, okay, I want to post okay. something about this theme, but I won't know exactly like, what I'm going to say because sometimes if you look at some of my posts like the grammatical errors and stuff because I'm typing right. it on the go but okay. it's all authentic as it's from the heart and people you know they, they know that for the, for the most part it's, it is authentic so I have like kind of like a theme like hey maybe I should post this and the stuff that really hits is stuff that I didn't even really think that was going to hit I'm just like all right I'm put it out there and we'll see what happens but yeah, yeah it, it's crazy I love it dude well listen we could be here all day um, people have a lot of questions. I wish I could get to all of them. Um, but I can't cause we're kind of running out of time. Um, but, uh, I'm just looking, I'm just kind of scrolling through the chat to see if there's one last one, but, um, Oh, here's a great one. Um, from Khalil. Uh, this is a great one. What advice we'll end on this. What advice for a new agent with a family Wait, hold on. What advice? Okay. What advice for a new agent with a family regarding being invested fully into learning the business, doing the grunt work? Okay. What advice do you have? You left out a couple of words. What advice do you have for a new agent with a family regarding being invested fully into learning the business, doing the grunt work while also bringing income to sustain his family? Okay. Gotcha. So, like, how do you, you know, how would you suggest? Or give him advice to balance that, right? To obviously learn as much as you can, but also the need to bring money in. What what advice would you give him? 
Right. Well, work for me, when I first got started, I was really like hungry, diligent. So I knew I was going to wake up every day, like with a, like a chip on my shoulder to go work hard and learn as much as I can. However, I feel like most agents, I would recommend joining a team, joining, join a team or, or get under somebody who's tenured in this business. Cause I didn't join a team, but I did have a few mentors that helped. Okay. Me that's true. Yeah. That's ropes in this business so you want to probably maybe join a team that has different resources that you can take advantage of you can host team open houses you can work team sign calls team rental leads you you will have a, a platform and different resources that you can instantly use and then real estate can be a lonely sport sometime because again you you only eat what you kill and if somebody is not um partaking in your success or I mean getting a piece of your success it's not like they're going to be checking on you to see if you lead generated today or if you followed up with the leads that you worked with so maybe join a team because yes they're going to take some of your commission however they have leads that they can provide you different people that you could shadow that uh that can help you as well so that's definitely like a a big thing oh yeah yeah, join the team. I love mentor. it, dude. Lots of great advice. Appreciate you, man, taking the time to be on this webinar with us. What's that? And a mentor? Oh, yeah. yeah jo join the team and get a mentor. Join a team and get a mentor. Two very, very important things. That's what I did. I joined a team and I joined my mother's team when I first started. And she was my mentor. I think it's good because you you are held accountable and you're taught certain um strategies you're given leads for the most part right and then you know everybody like when i was when i was running my team i always wanted people to outgrow it right so like you train people so they can outgrow it and go you know leave the nest so that's a good piece of advice. Appreciate you, man. All right, Montaz, you're awesome. This has been fun. Go order Montaz's book on Amazon. Um, that's another thing you should do. Uh, join a team, get a mentor, and read Montaz's book. Three things. Um, appreciate you. If anyone has a question for you, do you have any? Do you want to give them your email address? Yeah, you can email me at info at montezmccray.com. I also have a Discord group where I share like daily mindset and what I'm working on that can be found in my Instagram bio. Dude, really? You have a, a Discord server? I have a Discord server. How many people in there? Yeah, we have probably about a community of 50 people. Oh, right that's now. awesome, dude. Is And you're you're sharing like nuggets every day? Yeah, every day, just kind of like exclusive nuggets, what I'm working on in, um, in the background and, and things of that nature and just like different, maybe exclusive tips that I've learned as well. You know, you can't share everything on Instagram because like- I hear you, know, you man. <laughs> Real everything. quick, what are you reading right now? Oh, what book? Did, oh, I like one book that I read when I first got started was The Hyper Local Real Estate Agent. That was really, really good. Um, Oh, the one thing. The one mm -hmm. thing is really good out. And then also, this is a simple one, but the MREA, I, re I literally reread the entire MREA. And when I first started, I couldn't read it. It was too much. But now it was just everything that I needed. So the MREA is everything. People are asking, server? Discord. Join Discord. Oh, I meant exclamation points. Discord. Yeah. Um, MREA, the one thing. Awesome. That's great, dude. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here, man. Um, me. If this is going to be on YouTube in several days. So go and subscribe to the Lab Code Agents YouTube channel. And I will also email out the replay to my database. And Montez, thanks for being here, dude. Lots of value and people loved it and we appreciate it. So thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. This has been awesome. Have a great day, everybody.